my cats were quiet, were quiet earlier, but they just suddenly got excited. So anyway, like, um, so welcome you guys like, to this first class um, on like computer vision. So uh, basically, uh, it, this first class, I will just give an introduction and like kind of the logistic, like how, how this is going to work like uh, this semester. So I guess I, by this time, like, I guess like all of us are get used to like this online things. I, I don't think like uh, you will find this uh, kind of um, not uh, familiar with this environment, I guess. And uh, so this is my name and basically we don't have office hour apparently, uh, but uh, we have a forum basically. I guess he, I, I see that many of you guys already signed it up and the links are on campus and uh, and uh, please sign up Discord. And I, I find it very useful and basically you can raise any questions there. So um, unless it's something perfect, trying to raise it as a public question. So that's, uh, that will kind of initiate more discussion. And um, and of course you can contact me in private if something like just really related to you or something like that. And I will try to reply. I basically reply, should reply like within 24 hours. If I, I don't, then maybe like something is wrong. I don't know, maybe I caught, I catch COVID myself or something like that. So uh, otherwise I, I should be, uh, quite responsive. So, and uh, that's my research interest. I, I, I did some computation myself and uh, some machine learning, like deep learning. And also like, I, I used to work on like cell processing, but nowadays like, uh, cop, uh, of course I use, I work on like this um, populistic cell processing, you can say like basin stuff. Uh, and it's actually very much related to machine learning itself. and. And now it's a, basically most people work on the cell processing and move into like machine learning. And um, wait, why I have a, uh, yeah, so I, I guess it's okay. So if you, you have any question or like comments, just raise your hand or like, uh, and, uh, or just like, let me make sure I, Turn on the chat. Um, I used to have the chat here. So where's the chat here? Chat box. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that like the volume is very, very uh, low? Let me make sure. Like, um, Oh, okay. Yeah. So let me, yeah, I, I, I think I should get closer to the mic as we work better. So, um, and some other administrative stuff, like, uh, I, I picked this textbook basically it's because it's free and online. So you can just say, like, I mean, like, it's not the official textbook, I guess it's a preprint there. Uh, it's well written by a very, uh, kind of, uh, good researcher like uh, in that area, in this area. And um, I mean, in any sense, like this, okay, this book is a little bit dated, but this is a rapidly changing area. So this this book is about like written like 10 years ago, uh, but many of the stuff is still relevant. And basically like uh, the course website is here. I, I think you should realize that already if you, you came, you, I mean, took a look of uh, canvas. I will post like, most of the stuff like public, like uh, slides and, and maybe a link for the video lecture, like uh, just on the COPS website. And then like for something like semi private for example, like discussion will be mostly on Canvas, uh, sorry, on Discord. And Canvas is just for something like for homework submission basically. And uh, that's the TA and, uh, and, and anyway, like if you raise question on um, 
Discord, like either the TA or me will reply your question basically. And uh, to to engage you guys, like that would be like some extra credit that like, just in class participation. So I will uh, every now and then we just ask some question that like, you can just like type your answer in the your Zoom chat box there. And then I like, uh, basically it's just we call it quizzes, but it's like something pretty simple. I like just say a, a question. I like, uh, sometimes it's hard as I will make it like every question is basically just one point. And uh, if you answer correctly, you have one point. If you answer incorrectly, you get half the point. So uh, anyway, you get something like and whenever you answer. So and uh, and you can answer it like just like to everyone or like if, if you want to be more private, just answer the host. Uh, I usually lock in with multiple of me basically like just for convenience. Like I, I may have like a tablet also connecting to to this, uh, connecting to Zoom. So if you want to reply in private, uh, make sure that you reply to the host. So uh, because I, when I try to tally the, your, answer there uh, if you reply to not the whole say I may not get all the answer basically so just uh, I am you know, yeah you will see like maybe we'll have some questions even today so um there's some prerequisite um I for one thing like I expect you guys able to program that's very important like because like, the homework assignment will be more more or less like all um are basically all the homework assignment and programming assignment and um i i would encourage you guys to use uh open cv python uh if for some more low level like problems say like, for example like in the past i i asked like a question trying to implement, let's say, uh, uh, some filters and so on. Like in that case, I like, trying to do something from scratch. You may use MATLAB if you are really, really want to use MATLAB. But um, I will have some questions that will be like exclusively with like, Python. for example, like for um, for just like taking a video, like video stream, or like just getting video stream from your webcam. That at least like, I, I, this may be homework one, homework zero, like that, uh, I guess I, you should know a little bit open theory. Like the, the point is that like, by the end of this course, like I expect all of you guys like, at least able to pull out a video stream, like you think, you think uh, using open theory. So that makes sense, right? So otherwise I, mm, um, I mean, I, yeah, it, it's, it's, it seems like, like uh, I mean, like the, the point is, like, if you go to a small company, they won't use MATLAB because MATLAB is so expensive. The license fee is so expensive. Like, uh, if they do any um, computer vision thing, the first thing they will use they will be Linux plus Open Series. So it's good to know at least some basic, right? Some some basic Python stuff. And of course, like Python is useful like in many other applications as well. So I, I may give like some introduction on Python today. Like maybe I will see like how much time I have left after the introduction. And uh, I also um, you should know some linear algebra, like not very complicated stuff, but you should know for, for example, like what's matrix and vector and know like what's eigenvectors, eigenvalues and so on. Um, I, I probably will give some introductions as well. Like when I get to some materials that related to like linear algebra and also like vector calculus. I, I probably will give a review on that. Like when I, whenever I get to materials that need need those uh, background knowledge. Uh, but um, yeah, it's always good to know like more math. Like I, uh, I, I hope I took more math class when I was a graduate student and or like undergrad, but I, I didn't. And uh, is always so helpful. Like eventually, you find that like your entire life. I mean, um, those like API or like those software that can keep changing, but 
the map basically is always the same, like the map like 100 years ago is still relevant now. Um, and I'm not assuming my experience on a like, um, imaging and so on. Like, um, signal processing will help because like, signal processing is, uh, but I, I'm not kind of like assuming you have lots of knowledge on signal processing as well. Uh, um, so anyway, so that that's uh, again. I was I will go over today say some introduction like what, what this course is about like and what was computer vision is about. So I guess I uh probably, probably many of you have some idea already like uh about like what we mean by computer vision. Of course, it's vision. Like it's not vision twenty twenty that kind of vision, but it's like what we see. Uh, and we want to process what we see like with the computer and and extract information and able to take advantage of that to have some uh, useful application. Um, and uh, for example, like, yeah, this is like a classic scene, like, I guess from a movie, like, I don't know, before you were born. Uh, and this is like, just identifying like, okay, a car, and then I like, maybe do a segmentation. Okay, this is car, exactly the, the the method exactly to submit the car out and then maybe to extract some more information and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, if you think of that, like every image can tell a story, say, like, and sometimes they can tell more, sometimes they can tell only a little. And for mm -hmm. example, like this one, there's lots of information from this image alone, right? So you can say like, what, what, what's going on here? What happened? Like who's involved and like, and so on and so forth. And in, in nature, like computation is very difficult problem if you think of that, because the input itself, like uh, we'll talk more about that, but you can imagine that what's the input is essentially just a, a matrix of numbers, right? For example, if I have a grayscale image right here, like a back, back and white image, um, I, I will have, I can represent this image. Like for example, if I have the resolution of this image, we, we call it resolution, it's just what's the width and height of this image. Maybe uh, this is like 400 by like 600, let's say. Then it's just a big matrix, right? Of big matrix of numbers, right? And um, I may have the number that is like higher when it's brighter and the number is smaller when it's darker. Like for example, here, maybe I have seal here and this is a like, to 200, let's say. Typically, if you have like an 8 bit image, then the resolution you have like 256 levels. Like this is like people find that like this is kind of acceptable. Like you have 8 bits more or less, AV like is sufficiently, uh, sufficiently fine. So it's very common to have 8 bit images, except like for application, like medical imaging, you, you want to have higher resolution, higher kind of this. Um, resolution in, in terms of like the brightness. Um, uh, so as I said, it's just a bunch of numbers, right? But if you think of that, if I want to like understand what, what's going on like, in this bunch of numbers, uh, lots of kind of like uh, invariance like, is, is embedded in this image here. For example, if I have this same image, if I shift it, shift it a little bit, for example, this train just shifted like by 10 pixels. So when I say pixel, it's this, this, this picture element. So it's just a, it's, when I say like pixel, it's really, I guess you know that like this six, 600 by 400, like it would be like 600 times 400, 400 pixels. Like, and if I shift it, this, this train by like 10 pixels or something, um, or like your 10 unit, you think of 10 unit to the left or like, essentially there's, in terms of interpreting this image, there, there will be no change, right? Or like if I change the intensity, like if it's brighter or lighter uh, or darker, uh, the information you extract from here should be the same as well. Um, so, and but in terms of the representation, like that would be huge change, right? And um, yeah, this this is a yeah. We we'll think I, I guess I, you what I want to point out is like 
maybe you think a little bit more like just recognizing like this is a train is a, not an easy problem here. Um, of course, say for the last decade, like that's uh, great progress because mostly because of the advance in machine learning, in particular deep learning. Um, but there's still a like, lot of challenging problems in computation. So, um, and uh, compared with like human perception, uh, human that can do a much better job in some sense. Um, but actually also like the computer edge are, are really catching up. As I mentioned, like, for the last decade, like, is the huge progress. Um, and uh, by the way, computation by itself is a, a topic or like a discipline is keep changing. Uh, this is the a a uh, picture like a figure like I just extract from the textbook. You can see like it covers lots of different topics uh, from let's say image processing. Like I think we have another course like by image processing by uh, Joe Bob like uh, Professor Hufflechuck like. Uh, he is a great teacher, so I guess I, you, you should take his class as well. And um, <clears throat> and uh, there's uh, also like you see like many many uh, different topics here. It's it's traditionally like convention conventionally like considered as a a a topic in computation, but also like after a while like for example image processing. Now they like uh, less people are study uh, image processing and comparison because like they just branch out. So they get, um, I would say like in terms of people in comparison, like they consider like many problem in image processing are solved. Like, and of course, like, if you look at the uh, general articles in, for example, in TIP, like uh, transaction image processing and more people like also like move into areas that con conventionally they will not consider as like image processing. Uh, so there's lots of mixing and matching like um, uh, merging like of different discipline basically. Uh, so of course like, we, we cannot cover everything here. Like uh, you, you basically for many of the stuff I would say like I'm really scratching the surface. Like here's like, an introductory class. So um, I, I would say more like what what you, was the expected outcome later on, but uh, at the end, but uh, you will see it more about that. So, but here, like just wait for a second. Like, let's see, like we'll just get into like some applications to motivate you guys. Like, of course, I like, I think like as long as you are living in this modern world here, you'll get used to these applications. Like I will go pretty quick quickly because like this is like you you must be aware of all these like already. For example, like you can think of 3D modeling, right? So I, I have this kind of like that camera, so you, you can capture like that image from here and you can process this depth image and you can build a 3D model, say for example, have this 3D camera, say, yeah, and uh, build a pretty accurate 3D models. And later on, maybe you can use that for face recognition. Actually, I, I before I came to OU, like we, we did work on something similar like that. But uh, looking back, like you, you don't actually need like, yeah, you still have help with 3D models basically uh, for the face recognition. But um, yeah, so anyway, let, let's let's look at other applications. Like you, you have 3D modeling like for, for urban area as well, like or like not just urban area or like any area so you can, for example, like application in Google Earth, like, or, or so on. And uh, of course, I like recognizing objects and people, like this is something, um, a apparent application. So, or like you may want to label like the entire uh, image, trying to understand what, what, what do we have in the image. And, uh, there's some other applications like, like for example, enhancing images. Like this is like in the in the realm of like image processing, really. But uh, also like traditionally, people also consider this as part of like computation. For example, like we can do super resolution, like 
like, like in this example here, we have like multiple uh, kind of like capture a video stream here, right? Of like a license plate. And then maybe you can combine them to get a, a high resolution, right? Then you will be able to recognize that uh, plate number. Um, and also like then maybe increase this few of you, like this would be this kind of uncropping is like actually is also part of this kind of in painting, like uh, it sounds like a um, very similar problem here. So maybe you have like this, take this photo, but you don't like this kind of like wolf top here, you just want to cut it out. So you can do it in painting, like just say this part I don't want. So then just replace by this. But this seems magical, but like, um, nowadays this is not considered as research really, like, um, at least I got to be so mature at this point, like, um, I don't think people study this anymore, like, uh, I mean, in terms of like, uh, in the research community. Um, but of course, I, um, in terms of industry, though, it's very different, right? Industry is like, maybe five years behind, like, or like, you can think of like, uh, academia say like five years ahead, they like work on something, then then many, many papers, and then eventually they, they find that they can no longer improve that, and then the like industry pick it up, and then they like create like interesting applications. Um, and you can use that for forensic as well. This is an example that, like, for example, this lady's eye, like, yeah, it doesn't look like something interesting here, but from his eye, if you really zoom in, then you can get some information and then you realize that, okay, this fellow is with this guy, let's say. And, uh, and, and uh, let's look at some problems. Like, okay, I, I guess I, in terms of problems and applications, it's not very um, good. Um, um, I mean, precise distinction this, between the two here but here when I refer in problems, it's more like uh, um, the kind of problems you can use in like many applications. For example, like OCR, like you can use OCR in different applications, including like, for example, like license plate reader, like we just mentioned earlier, earlier um, after you kind of enhance the image of the license plate, then maybe you want to recognize that way. Right? Then you now you really need to do some maybe first like image enhancement, for the enhancement to make the letters is easier to, to read. And then need to do segmentation to split each of the letter and then recognize each of the letter and so on. Um, and uh, also like automatic track processing, let's say um, uh, this is even a Sudoku grabber. Um, all, all these are again like, it's actually quite mature now, like doing like OCR nowadays. Uh, actually, I just rejected one paper like as as a reviewer like last uh, last week or something like some someone submitted a paper on license pay uh, recognition. I, and yeah, it's hard to sell something like that nowadays. Like in 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 terms of like um, publication, I mean, like of course, like still like this is like. Uh, um, I'm not sure it's profitable or not because like the comp competition also is pretty, pretty steep, like uh, pretty steep because um, um, there's some at least like several companies that like, are dominating. I guess like when they really focus on just one thing, they do really well, and then like as a new competitor, it's not easy to get in actually. But um, yeah, yeah. What I just want to say said earlier is just. Um, in terms of academia, like if you want to write a paper nowadays in 2021 on license pay, like recognition, um, it would be like a hard sell like to top journal, I would say. So uh, also like face detection, like again, like this is like something like very mature now, face detection. Uh, 20 years ago is a very hot uh, research area. Uh, and uh, face recognition also is quite mature now, actually. Um, and, uh, but I, in terms of accuracy, I, I sometimes have doubt, like sometimes I, if, if, especially in Asia, like it's more surveillance is more um, 
prominent and uh, prevail. I don't want a good word for that. Like it's basically everywhere. Uh, sometimes they claim that 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 uh, 99.9 point something uh, accuracy, but sometimes I've dealt with that. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, but in terms of like, you can think of the like application, for example, like uh, not, for example, like um, in the past, I, 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 I kind of not exactly participate. I, I, yeah, I participated in the in the initial phase of a project. It's like they use face recognition not as a way to for access control, but for example, you consider in a I don't know what is that uh kind of like uh, some expensive like it's like very um privileged club that maybe you you have someone's coming in but like it's a reason not not privileged but also like maybe have like more than a thousand members then you have the uh what's that like the greeter may not know each of these people or like cannot remember each of the members right so but then you can have this cheating kind of like uh, system running behind basically like someone's coming in just recognize that person and kind of like hint and tell tip the um greeter like who's that guy and then they like, can address that guy like uh, that uh, fellow like nicely so um yeah, that, in that sense, like, you don't need to have like something, uh, for example, if you need to build a face recognition system over the entire society to have like 95.99% accuracy, I, I really have doubt on that. Right? But if you just for a smaller population, maybe a thousand people, like then they probably do a really good job. So, um, and this is like, also a face recognition, like, uh, and sometimes like, if you use the biometric, it's better. Like for example, like this guy, uh, this is supposed like, a story saying that like you can recognize this girl like over, um, I don't forgot, like two decades later on and so on. Like mostly it's based on the uh, retina, his iris pattern. So in this sense, like, the face is just totally changes, uh, totally change. Um, but uh, the iris patterns is pretty consistent. So, and uh, of course, like this like, face recognition now is used, like, for example, like on your iPhone and so on. Um, and auto recognition, like, it's just like, a different application of auto recognition, right? So you, and of course, like, it's not exactly the same because like, when we say face recognition, we have like all of these faces pretty similar. Um, and, uh, and we want to identify like, uh, one phase from another phase, right? So, but object recognition is like, you, you can, um, depends on what kind of object. For, for example, like if you apply in, for example, in, in supermarket, like maybe that, that, that scenario would be similar also, like, because, uh, or like it's actually it's easier because you have these packages, like all of them are more similar to one another because like, they, they are kind of standardized, right? All, all these package basically more, will identical more or less I can say but if you think of um, more general generic like classification for example like just classify all the pedestrian like detection so in that sense like each of the person each of the pedestrian uh, they are they are similar but not identical way eh? so uh, those problems will be more challenging actually um, and uh, there's different auto recognition, like, and of course, like, you can, you have, uh, you have this Google Gargle application, right? I don't know how many of you played with that before. Uh, and, uh, and of course you can do image search. Uh, yeah, I guess I would just skip all this. So it's not exactly, uh, we mentioned 3D early on and, uh, and of um yeah maybe i will skip this one also yeah so i i guess like one of the most uh challenging problem now is like we'll be doing uh we'll be using computation for self-driving car um 
this is still like up an open problem as you you, you as you see uh, uh compared to like many of the problems we mentioned earlier because like the the different scenarios that can happen on on the world is like can change as say like, uh, rapidly and can change a lot um and of course like Elon Musk like want to emphasize that like what well, like lighter is a clutch like he he want to say like you don't need lighter you as I don't know like lighter uh when I say lighter it means the using basically the it's like radar but use light so um and uh, many of these early self-driving cars use lighter because like you can exactly pinpoint the distance of an object it's like using radar where you can very exactly pinpoint like where, where's the object like where's the pedestrian where's the cars and so on but um but Elon Musk like believe that like you don't need that I'm actually like it's many people believe that as well because like we have uh and we have a nice example that we don't need that because human beings don't need to have lighter to drive a car uh but um, but at the moment, I guess it's still uh, uh, quite challenging. Uh, but of course, it's rapid. Um, kind of like this, all these techniques, uh, technology is rapidly uh, improving. Like, um, who knows? Say like four or five years later, or maybe we really have like level four, level five self-driving car. Um, so uh, robot vision uh, is similar to self-driving car. It can be like even more complicated. I would say like uh, it's actually more challenging like in general because <laughs> when you have self-driving car, at least you're driving on the world, right? But if you have a robot exploring a new environment, like uh, it can be like actually it can be even more challenging like can than than you can imagine like. Um, I don't know like how many of you guys are aware of like for example uh the state of the art on a pattern recognition or on, on image recognition, object recognition. Uh, um nowadays like if you just talk about um object recognition, um uh, let, let me start with that. Like uh uh for 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 some of you guys probably many of you guys do not know i i don't know like by by the way like uh i i really should uh let me let me drop some of your hands here but i i want to know like how many of you guys are still here actually uh um can, can you just say answer yes or no whether you heard of image net competition maybe i i i might because of my my accent oh yeah you can tell you i yeah oh, okay many people are still here yeah oh uh, so it's it's basically a a competition a uh a annual competition a uh, organized by Stanford, uh, Stanford University. Uh, I guess I like, since at least for a decade now, I've, I I don't know what's the first uh, competition was hold. Uh, when 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 was it hold? But um, one in basically one category like one challenge they have is doing object recognition, and uh, they have like thousand different categories basically and have like um, over a million images. And then for example, you have image like this, for example, I have a car here. Now you have, you need to build a system. I don't know, basically computer vision like system to recognize this guy. Basically, basically you can think of a program, like just input the image and try to recognize what is that. And uh, by 2015, actually, just having the image net just for that data set, uh basically the machine is is doing on par or like better than human uh, of course like, when i say that like it's hard to say um at first i i guess i i need to put in some caveat i say it's doing better than human but uh we only have one data point for human that's basically a, 
a Stanford uh, graduate student. Now he's a, he, he's a famous researcher also. And I, I forgot the way I see now. Or either in uh, open AI or like, I forgot the way I see now. Um, he, he personally, I mean, he do a test on himself, like trying to solve this uh, uh, kind of like image like competition, like not, not writing a program, but him himself, like trying to recognize each, each of these images, give these classes. And he has a 5% error rate basically. And, uh, and oh, by, by the way, uh, because of, um, because of, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the quiz things and that's extra credit for participation. Uh, please make sure when you guys log in with Zoom, you have your name is identifiable. Actually, I just browse through. Okay, that's good. Like when I browse through that, like no one use like some uh, uh, superhuman, almost like kind of like some uh, legendary. I don't, know, I don't know some some weird uh, alias. So okay, that's that's great. So anyway, um. So that, that's okay. I, I just mentioned that's one data point there, like that. That uh, for just use that data point, the machine learning model is like working better than human. Uh, but I guess I, that is not the end of the story, though, uh, or like the end of like all object recognition research, because uh, also like. People then realize that those machine learning uh, algorithm can be easily fooled. For example, if I have this image, it's a car. If I just say, if I want to make it a bird, or like I want to make it a man, or make it a human being, I can just change the intensity a little bit, and uh, and you won't recognize this image, or like you you or, or you can think of like I can put in a watermark. You can you can think of this as like some kind of watermark. And then I can fully fool the computer vision system or like the algorithm to think that this is a human. But of course, like for us, it's very robust. Like we, we won't have like a watermark attached to this image. Then we, we think like this is a human instead of a car. Um, so anyway, yeah. So, okay, let, let, let me continue anyway. So uh, of course, there's some other, other application like like medical imaging and you can imagine a lot of applications. So we just mentioned like, a lot of these kind of possible applications and uh, and as I mentioned, like, this is really, computation has always been a very active research area. Let's like, keep changing over time. Like what was considered a uh, part of computation then they, like, for example, image processing, and now it's like they just spin out and and um, or at least like people like work very much in computation now uh, may not be very much interested in some of those area, uh, but we will still talk about that like for because I some of the techniques I are still relevant or like they are so simple like sometimes it's like uh, you're not actually working always like just for the sake of a of like cutting edge technology to solve some very complicated problem, right? But sometimes maybe you just want to have this image, like just enhance a little bit, looks a bad, looks a little bit better. So, um, and um, in that case, I like, you you don't need the um, you don't need deep learning neural networks to do that. Uh, and um, and by the way, there's a link that like there's a a good link to, I don't know, I didn't check it like this year. I guess I, I got, I, I put it here. I mean, I first included this like last year or something like that, I forgot. Hopefully this link is still, still work, I don't know. So, but I don't know, you, you can just go online, Google and like Wikipedia. Like, um, that's, and basically the textbook is like very good as well. Like you, you should uh, fit through that. Like, um, so let's think of like, maybe just give some remarks like why computation is so difficult. So 
Oh, uh, first of all, it's a ill post problem, right? So, I, okay, this slides is like not it's about that, but you think of this, it's really an ill post problem, right? We live in a three dimensional world. The information is three dimension, but what is projected to, to us is actually 2D. So we need to, of course, there's lots of cons uh, ambiguity there. And um, to get back to the 3D information from our 2D vision, uh, by itself is actually a ill post problem, right? We, we, at least like that's impossible. We, we can see something behind the object, right? That's, it's impossible we get the entire 3D shape. For example, if I'm looking at a cube there, I know it's a cube just because like from my experience that if I, uh, yeah, I, let me sketch something. Uh, Why I cannot, uh, where is that? Pointer pen, right? Huh, it's weird. Ah, oh, anyway, I guess this is easier. Yeah, for example, like, if I see something like that, I know it's a cube, right? But how do I know? Because I, I mean, like, it's not for sure I know, right? It's just from my experience that I know it's likely to be a cube, right? I cannot see what's going on in behind me, but I have something very weird, I don't know, um, structure at the, I mean, behind this box here, but I just assume it's a box or I assume it's a cube. Just because from my experience that like, it's unlikely what's behind is like some very weird structure, right? So we, we actually, there's lots of like background knowledge is used when we interpret anything. Uh, and uh, and also like, if you think of that, like I, I'm, I'm not sure that this is an article I got from online. And I, I don't know, like this is like back like in 1990. I don't know whether this information is still uh, correct or not, maybe there's newer research have changed. But um, it's saying that like we, we use actually quite a lot of the, our brain capacity on visual processing. So you can imagine it's actually really it's a, a difficult problem. Like it's like 30% is actually used for visual compared to like, uh, but, but something like it's actually, I, I always thought like hearing is more complicated than touching, but it turns out actually touching is maybe like, it's more um, compressed, compress than like hearing, I don't know. So, but anyway, it's a complicated problem in nature. And, uh, and, and you can imagine also, like, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a ill post problem. Like just think of a car, like from different viewpoints, it can be very different, right? And uh, also like different enumeration, it can change quite a lot, scale. And also like that's interesting, intercast variation, right? So the, all these are cars, but like they have different colors, different shapes and so on. For chair, it will be even worse, right? I guess I, you, you have a sofa, it's a, a kind of chair, I guess a type of chair. It's very different from like maybe a chair with, with no, I don't know, just, just a seat or like, I don't know, that there's all kinds of different chairs. Um, and motion can affect like our perception and background cutter and the uh, occlusions. Uh, and uh, that, that also local and ambiguity. Actually, this is kind of interesting. You see like, we really use a lot of our knowledge to understand what's going on. For example, like, what's this? Uh, anyone can, can okay, this is a uh, considered quiz. I just test it out. Like, uh, what, what is this thing? Like, can, can I just check like how many of you, of you guys are still here? Uh, for this photo here. What do you think? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so how, how do we know that? Right, this, this is a, uh, if you think of like, this can not be low level uh, processing. When I say low level is I think of like doing filter, like you learn single processing, some math, 
whatever, if we don't have any background knowledge, just think of like, okay, uh, we, we need to do some filtering and so on. This would be impossible to do enhancement uh, to get back to the original image to identify this as a phone. But for us, we will just take it for granted. Okay, this must be a phone. Like it looks like it, it, this, guy, this guy is driving. But we could be wrong also, like this is a similar situation. Uh, so, but of course I, uh, yeah, this is, you will think like this guy's not, if you see something like that. So, um, and um, this, another example that like you can get lots of hints uh, from, even though like, for example, here, like you cannot see clearly what's going on back here, right? So what was this exactly? But if you look at the entire picture, entire image, then you, you can kind of guess at what we have like here as well. So um, what I mean like um, computer vision is complicated because it's not just a math problem. Like, I mean, it's not just data science problem because like, you cannot just say like, everything just, okay, I trying to train everything, all these images, and then they like, uh, try to, if you think of machine learning, it's really a statistics problem, right? So because I, like, you just like give enough data and then give sufficient data. I, for example, you think of a classification problem. So you have like all these images and uh, you collect like a, 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 a 10,000 cat images and 10,000 dog images and you get 10,000 each of these images like for each of the class and then you can do a classification. Uh, actually, we are doing do so well. It's actually amazing already. And, and, and of course, I maybe we'll later on like, to talk about how, how we did that. But if you think of that, like uh, we are still quite far from really understand what's going on. We're able to recognize an image or like to do some statistical influence, just saying, okay, there's a cat, cat here. It's really not understand the image. Uh, actually, maybe like this, this will be a very good example. Like I go very much to the end here. So for this one, if you want to understand what's going on, I mean, like we, for example, like at the very moment for the state of the art, we, we won't have any problem to recognize there's some human here, there's a weight here, like there's a person here, like several person here. And we, we can even recognize Obama here. Um, but the problem is like, we, we, it's very difficult to build a system to understand what's going on here. You have the contest, human look at that immediately. We, we know, okay, like Obama is playing a joke to this one, to this guy here, but it's very difficult like, for human to understand this. I'm mean, sorry, for, for machine, to build a machine to understand all this. This will involve, of course, involve AI as well. Um, and uh, yeah, of course we can't go this deep like in this class, but what I mean is like, if you think of that, uh, it's quite amazing. We, 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 have, we have this kind of like different algorithms can, get us to this far, but there's still like lots of open problem ahead of us. Um, and I guess I missed out one thing also, if you just think of like images, like for example, I have an image here, like, like typical resolution, like let's say just a thousand by thousand, like this is a like one megapixel uh, image, right? And then like, and if you think of that, like this is a what? Uh, the if you you just think of this as like this image, when we have two fifty six different intensity levels, then the number of combinations of a possible image in this sense will be like what two fifty six of one million, right? So ten to the six, right? So this is a really astronomical number. It's more than the number of molecules or like atoms in the universe. 
So in terms of recognition, are you thinking like for each of these, we are able to just think of simple problem. Like when we are saying like, identify this is a cat, like cat photo, oh, sorry, this is a pen, it's not a cat, this is a person. Like a person from a, from, from a cat photo, let's say I have another picture, like a cat, let's say. My drawing is wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, so it's actually amazing even to think of like we can doing so well now because like that, as I mentioned, like the number of combinations here, like it's like two to 56 to 10 to six, something like that. So this is like, what 10 to the probably like, what uh, I think the number is like, what two to, I, I don't know, like, let, let me just guess. Like, so anyway, it's a really, really big number, right? But number of data, the, the data point we have is really rare, right? We will have very few data points. And uh, it turns out that like we can train a model, it's like robust enough to be able to recognize like this is a cat, this is a human. It's actually quite amazing if you really think of that. But of course, like, for one thing is like, uh, why it's possible is also like, even though there's like, so many different possibility of input, many of them are not lateral images. So for example, if you just like go to MATLAB and randomly random generate a, a matrix of like a thousand by thousand, and then you just plot it out or like uh, visualize that as an image, most likely you'll just get noise or it's just a garbage, right? random like Gaussian noise. That won't be like any image that you will expect it. So therefore like lateral images actually have, indeed like even though you have a very large like input, input space here, uh, many of like within this input space, like input, I mean this, this image space here, only a sm tiny small fashion is possible. Possible like, it's, it's like kind of like, expect to be lateral images. Okay, I, anyway, so uh, let me just go back. Actually, I, I, I go, uh, so I guess I say enough about this. Um, again, like this, this is a, a, another very nice example, like saying that um, computer vision itself or like vision itself is an ill post problem. Like apparently this is not really have a large Coke bottom, uh, bottle here. It's just like the artist is really doing a great job, right? But um, it just looks like it's really real, right? So if you just look at this, um, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it can easily, easily flow, uh, easily flow a computation system. Um, and, uh, and for us as well, actually. And by the way, like, uh, human vision are not perfect as well. I guess every once in a while, I will just put some of these illusions. That's, it's actually quite interesting. Like when you think of that, like you will think of like, is that bug or like, is that needed? Like we have this kind of like illusion. Is that like, uh, is that helping us? Like, or like, it's, I mean, like, it's not sure it's a feature of bug, like I would say. So for example, this one, like, of course, uh, you recognize both both of these gentlemen here, um, but in the first glance, like, most people will think that this is, must be Algo. But uh, if you look at it carefully, it's actually just Bill Gates' face. I uh, saw not Bill Gates. I mean Bill Clinton's face, like with like uh, Algo's hairstyle. So uh, I'm also maybe um, yeah. I don't know the year probably, probably is Algo as well. I don't know. But I, I guess I, that's, maybe this is a feature, I don't know, of human vision. So this is another, another illusion. I'm not sure it's a feature or a bug. So again, I guess this is where you must have came across that before, like A apparently is darker than B, but it turns out that they are actually the same in density. And uh, yeah, we, we came across like something like that before. Like it's amazing that human vision is able to recognize something. <laughs> so 
we, we can tell like, okay, this must be like a congressman, maybe like this may be American flag and so on. But yeah, it's not exactly clear like how we are able to do that. So why we want to study like composition and why you want to take this class, I guess. So uh, first of all, like, so composition, as I said, is a ill post problem, but we have lots of images like, for better or worse, like it doesn't look like there would be like a better sensing technology than vision. So it's cheap and like we have our eyes are very efficient sensor like to perceive the world. And because of that, we also like build artificial eyes, like basically the cameras that now basically captures a million, million, zillions of images. I am including and also videos as well, like all the time. And because of that, like there's companies that like, get rich out of that, like with many different applications. And of course, because of that, there's also a many job opportunities. Uh, and uh, for the for this course itself, as, as you can see, the area itself, like computation is a huge topic. Uh, it's impossible to cover like everything. And I would likely to scratch, as I said, like scratch like surfaces of many different topics. But at the same time, like, um, uh, I, I mean, like this is a very hands-on class. Uh, majority of the your grade and would be based on a uh, homework assignment that is kind of like will be programming assignment and also like uh, the final project as well. Like that will be a final project in this class. Like uh, you you want you can be quite applied. Just I think of like an interesting application and maybe uh, try try to build a develop a kind of like a an algorithm or like implement a something like program, or a system able to to do what you want. Um, so as I said, okay, okay. Let me get back to here. Like, so the expected outcome will be like you, I expect you guys will be able to uh, implement some low level application. When I say low level, it's more like, um, for example, simple filters and so on, like and that you can just manipulate the raw information, basically raw information of image would be just a matrix, right? Or like if you think of like a color image it would be like three different matrix uh, with like three different components, color components. Um, and that would be very simple. For example, you, you should have an image where you know like, okay, I can, maybe change the intensity by maybe that that very simple operation. I I I, I expect you, you should be able to do that. Uh, uh, maybe you can use MATLAB or use OpenCV for that. But also like I expect you to know at least some OpenCV able to create some simple applications. Uh, at least you will be able to um, like capture video stream from a webcam and then maybe just change it to a back and right. Or maybe I, I, I would even put it as a homework, just make sure you know that. So, um, and also like the intention of this class, because this is also like part, uh, there's a graduate session here also, right? So there's a course list like with a graduate session. So um, it'd be useful like to have sufficient theoretical background, as I mentioned at the beginning, like math is always very useful, like, like some of this uh, theoretical uh, background and with deeper understanding of the algorithms beyond just like calling the API will be necessary if, if you want to improve the algorithm. And also like it would be useful for you to understand current research. So, I mean like, after this class, you won't be able to understand all the papers like, out there like, in the, uh, for example, like the ethic conference, like top conference and like, maybe CPR. But if you, for example, like if you, you work on a particular project, so at least like, the intention is like, you should be able to get deeper into that area. And when you know some of this theoretical background, so like get 
have some exposure with hands-on experience of some of these things, uh, you should be able to understand the current research in that area and in that particular tiny, I shouldn't say too tiny, but uh, for example, you will work on, uh, let's say, um, 3D uh, reconstruction, let's say, I don't know, I just, let's say, uh, after this class, you, you more immediately know 3D reconstruction because I, we, we will know like some of these components, like maybe like what components you need to know, but um, that would be like pointers like for you guys. Okay, if I need to do 3D reconstruction, I can, I can, I should read this, 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 and then I, um, maybe you will be able to implement like some older algorithms and that will give you foundation to understand the current uh, state of the art. For example, like current research, and then you, you will be able to uh, understand what's going on with the, for example, there's a late, latest paper, you read it, like you, you will kind of understand, oh, okay, they, they mean that, okay. So, and I, I hope it's clear, like what, what I expecting, like if you, uh, you will learn from this class. So, and uh, as I mentioned, like that mostly homework, uh, basically it's a, uh, I would say like it's a project-based class. Uh, you you need you have this homework assignment to be programming based, and then like uh, and the final project. And and, uh, and if you're graduate students, and you expect to give a presentation as well. Um, I will give more detail. So basically, uh, if you go to Canvas, you see that I already put in some of this uh, um, due date for some of this assignment there, the key assignment, uh, because like, that's a presentation for the graduate students that uh, you, you should put in your um, presentation abstract. Um, uh, I forgot, I, 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 I think I said the due date, just I delayed the due date, I, I think that maybe because of, um, um, the semester started like later now, so I delayed for two weeks. So hopefully you guys have, I guess it's the end of February, you're supposed to give a, if you're a graduate student, uh, you, you're supposed to uh, give an abstract for your presentation. I guess like, uh, the earliest presentation will start like uh, two weeks after that. So I, I want you to have two weeks or one week, hopefully two weeks, so have sufficient time after you um, kind of propose your abstract, you really look into that. So in terms of presentation for graduate students, if you take my class before, uh, the difference of presentation and file project is that like presentation, you can talk about someone else stuff, right? So you can study a paper, study some work, and just to explain, I mean, you don't let, project is not, uh, project can be good project, but uh, you can have a partner, uh, but I, I don't, um, I, I don't encourage you guys have to have huge group. So for example, like a fee, four, fee maybe maximum like four. I, I mean, I what I used to do, I guess I would use, uh, do it the same, same thing as well. I mean, this time is, I'm not going to enforce you guys must be a group less than like four or five, but instead like, I would just give a penalty adjustment because just think of if I hire a group of people to work on a project, like, um, I don't want to hire five people like to implement a website, right? Uh, if I can hire two. So yeah, I will just have a kind of an exponentially increasing penalty. So I forgot what is that. So, but don't worry about that. If you just have like a group of two or maybe even three, I forgot. Uh, you will get, if three, I forgot is 5% or maybe something like that. And then up, then maybe you have four, maybe like 10% deduction and like five, you have like, 20% uh, deduction and so on and so forth. So, but I, I don't have, ex I, I don't remember like I have students have like five uh, kind of like team members in a group. Uh, presentation on the other hand, like you're supposed to present on your own. Uh, and uh, as I said, like you, you, if you do a presentation, um, you, you, you don't need to be presenting uh, others I mean, your own work, only in the sense like, uh, you just read what's going on and you don't even need to implement that. You just read as like a reviewer. Okay, I try to understand what's going on and then present that like to your best understanding. Um, and uh, 
hopefully you present something interesting. You can select anything you 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 want. Uh, but for the final project, like you need to really work on that. So what I mean is, like it doesn't need to be. Just finish the interview. Yes. Uh, is there some question? Can you repeat that? Like, it's, uh, I cannot hear clearly actually. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, or oh, maybe not. So, I mean, like, for for the final project, like, you you can. It doesn't need to be a completely new algorithm. Let's say you can be repeating someone else algorithm. Let's say, and maybe use it in some other application. You try to implement that. Uh, but you need to get your hands dirty. That that's what I mean. So you cannot be, uh, and, and it's not sufficient. Let's say you you have uh, used something like, for example, for example, let's say I use face recognition, and then you pull out some code like, uh, um, or some open face or something like that. Just just. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Are we supposed to work in code? You, you don't need to be. Let me just type it. Like, uh, uh, As I mentioned, that's extra credit like uh, that. Uh, we already tried that, so I, I would tally uh, what you guys answer like just just now, like later on. So, um, I mean, in terms of grading, I, I guess uh, you you want to check the the websites for detail. I I, I don't go through that here, um, uh, because like the graduate and the undergrad like is a little bit different because graduate you have presentation as well. Uh, and uh, there's a late policy for assignment in general, like there's a 5%, like it's a small penalty. So therefore like, I'm not going to waive that. Like basically you just make sure you arrange your time well, so not to be too late. So to give you guys incentive to submit the assignment, uh, even though like you're really, really late. So it will be kept to have a maximum deduction of 50%. So if like maybe like you're late for like two months, but you will still get like 50% like for your submission. Um, academic integrity is just common sense. Don't copy your homework. Try to work on, uh, do your own home. I mean, that many of this program assignment, right? So it's really difficult for me to catch whether you copy your homework, but for your own benefit, like, it, you won't learn anything, right? I, I won't make it really difficult, but try to work on it yourself first. And you can definitely discuss them. Try to take advantage of uh, um, uh, this goal, but don't don't post your solution directly. So then the others uh, have chance to try it out as well. So if you post the solution directly then, but um, if you uh, you have any kind of like questions with like, uh, any issues, just just feel free to post a, uh, anything on this call. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically everything. So, okay, I, I yeah, I, I, I thought that, okay, I, I take more time than I expected. Actually, it's a good time I, I use. I, I think like, what, is, is that 210 is like the, uh, I don't know. Is, is this supposed to be 215? Okay, I have five minutes then. So um. Uh, so okay. What should I do? I have five minutes. So it, it's let let's see. It's uh. Okay, maybe maybe okay. Let let let, let me uh. Let me. Uh. Maybe do a little bit. Uh, I I was thinking, to. Spend some time on Python. Uh, in case any of you guys are not familiar, but uh, five minutes. Uh, so let, let's see how far I can go. But uh, 
As you see, like I'm a, a Linux guy here, so I, I use Linux for over a decade. Actually, I love Linux. I, I my basically like my my uh, uh well, how do you call that the, the OS that I, I working OS or like that that the OS I use for my normal business is a uh, Linux. Um, I'm of course I have like Windows as you can see like here like for for presentation here, but um, I, I, I encourage you guys to learn Linux as well because uh, again, like for for whatever like cost reasons, if you go to like a small company, a small company, or like if you start make a, your own startup, of course, like, something free is better than something you need to pay for. So, and uh, no matter Windows, like how you call it, like now it's like free or something like when when you need to have more features it's not free or like when you need to get ad or something and um, and and uh you can use mac as well i guess um it's essentially similar to linux i would say uh and uh okay first thing maybe uh one thing I, I just mentioned open Siri, I guess I, if you use Linux, let me like installing open Siri is very easy. Uh, and um, if you're using Windows, like first thing you want to install like uh, Conda or Anaconda. Uh, let's see. Let me search Anaconda. So um, you can just download Anaconda, like install that, and um, and oh, by the way, let me let me. I need to pull your chat. Yeah, actually, maybe maybe that's that's good. Like the thing I'm going to say here is just say. Make sure you guys say install Anaconda. The next time I'm I'm going to talk about something Python. Uh, so um, I don't know what OS you're using. If you're using Mac or Windows, I install Anaconda. If not, if you're using Linux like myself, then like uh, you just basically have like Python already installed. Um, and uh, and it's a good kind of habit to uh, use virtual environment. Uh, if you're using Conda, like I, I don't have Conda here, of course. Eh? Uh, you want to use Conda create to create another a new environment. For example, I can create a new environment called P feed, let's say, and then uh, the Python version is like that. So I, I don't have Conda here, of course, it doesn't work. Uh, then once you have create con, I mean create a new environment con Conda. Uh, the, the good thing is that if you have this is a like a sandbox, you can screw this up. Like if it doesn't work well, then you can just um or like you can uh, install multiple of this uh, virtual environment, and then they uh, uh, if maybe for example like uh, sometimes uh, you have like different version of packages. Say like some some packages work well with some version of Python, but some doesn't work well with some other version of Python. And so you may want to keep maybe like five, Python 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, like multiple versions. So if you have the virtual environment, it's very convenient. convenient. Um, so I think for Mac it's the same. So when you have that uh, created, then you can kind of activate, for example, these things, then you will, uh, basically get into the virtual environment. And if you are using uh, kind of uh, Linux as I do, then uh, I can, for example, like I can install like the virtual environment. Uh, of course, I, I already have that here, I think. Uh, I have a wrong spelling, I don't know why. So anyway, I, I already have virtual environment, okay. Um, Hmm. Yeah, forget about this. So I have the virtual environment for me to activate that. 
so um, after virtual environment here, then, then if I go to Python, then yeah, I have I have stuff blah blah blah. So I guess for one thing, I guess already time here. So for one thing, like you guys, please install Python. Uh, maybe also install open Siri. So in, install open Siri is easy once you install, Py, install Python because uh, you can pick install that. Um, so once you install Python, just pick install the open Siri, then, then that's it. So um, so make sure you get open Siri and Python install like next time, then like, maybe we can talk more about that next time. So, okay, I guess uh, I will end here. So. Uh, Thank you for attending. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Yeah, sure. So I guess I will, uh, I'll see if you guys have, uh, yeah, I guess I will just end here.